quite an efficient mechanism uh, and uh, Aave is one of the, the um, DeFi platforms, the big platforms that uh, have these money markets. So there's a few core features of Aave uh, that you might be interested in uh, during this hackathon to, to take advantage of and to use. Uh, hold on, I just need to make someone a host. Uh, make us. Yep. Um, change host. I think that worked. Yep. I think yes, that worked. that worked. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so yeah. So there's, there, these are there, there's uh, I guess three three main areas of Aave uh, that would be relevant to what you're building. Uh, so there's the earning part. So that's essentially depositors can put their money in and earn some interest on their money. Uh, there's borrowers, uh, where if they need to borrow some money at certain interest rates, they can do that. And then also there's flash loans as well. And I'll go over each uh, part of that. So, so that's sort of a really basic overview of uh, Aave. Uh, if you have questions, yeah, remember to type in the chat and let me know. Uh, then later on, I'll talk about money logos, which is really in the DeFi space. That's what a lot of people are building. And we'll go over some really cool applications. Uh, also, a little bit about myself. So I'm a developer. Uh, at Aave, I also do a bit of um, uh, developer relations and uh, ecosystem building. We also have a grants program that we can go over later. So after this hackathon, you know, if you want to continue with your project, uh, we'd love to see uh, hackathon projects continue uh, actually becoming products and companies. Uh, so we do have a grants program as well. So Aave, we actually have uh, 17 listed assets. So what that means is out of the 17 listed assets, you, uh, if you have them, you can uh, earn some interest on them, uh, which is pretty cool. And then for a certain number of those assets, you can also borrow them in case you need them as well. Uh, then also we just announced a few hours ago uh, our first uh, multi-market, uh, which is uh, based on Uniswap. Uh, so for those that are more deeper into the DeFi space, uh, Uniswap, uh, you can become a liquidity provider on Uniswap uh, and then you get these uh, LP tokens. Now we allow you to use those LP tokens as collateral uh, in, in the, the Aave market, uh, which is pretty cool. And you, you we're hoping to see some really cool projects being built out of that. All right, so going over the, the, the earning parts. So this is for depositors. And these are the specific, I guess, protocol features. Uh, we won't go too much into the code because so far in the chat, uh, everyone's said that they're a non-dev. Um, if, if you're a dev, uh, we've, got, we've got great documentation as well, so you can look at the documentation if you're a developer. Uh, but hopefully this screenshot doesn't scare you off. Uh, but essentially, from a high level, you can deposit, uh, let's say, ETH or any of the tokens that we support. And then as a depositor, you'll receive what we call an A token. And what this is, is that it's a one-to-one -one, uh, equivalent of whatever you've deposited. So that uh, essentially we've tokenized your deposit. And so therefore you can send that tokenized deposit to someone else if you want to, uh, and they can earn that interest. Uh, and uh, once you've uh, have that a token and you, uh, you can have the, you have the ability to use it as collateral uh, on the Aave protocol. So then you can uh, borrow money if you want to. Uh, one of the other features, uh, once you have the a token, you can also, uh, it accumulates interest uh, every second. Uh, that you have that those funds in the Aave protocol. You can also uh, redirect that interest, um, or you can uh, generally, you'll just uh, have the interest just accumulate in your own wallet. Uh, so, so it's immediate, it's, uh, you can hold, you can deposit that money uh, in the Aave protocol for as long as you want, and you can withdraw it whenever you want, uh, and you'll get all the accumulated interest uh, that, uh, based on the interest rates. Uh, secondly, the second major feature is, of course, the borrowers. So if you uh, want to borrow money, uh, generally you would have uh, locked or you'd have deposited some money into the Aave protocol, then you'd receive those A tokens. And that depending on the assets that you've uh, deposited, you'd be able to, low, you'd be able to borrow some money uh, in, in, uh, depending on the, uh, the uh, certain parameters of that asset that you've uh, collateralized. So that, that's pretty cool because uh, let's say you can deposit ETH, then out of that you can borrow some DAI or you can borrow some USDC or you can borrow some stablecoin if you want. Also, you can do the opposite. If you want to deposit some USDC, 
uh, or some other stable coin, you can also borrow a more volatile asset uh, like, like ETH or something else. Uh, so, so you can do some interesting things with that. Another special feature of uh, Aave protocol is uh, we have uh, rate, what we call rate switching. Uh, we have two types of rates. So we have the variable interest rate and also the fixed, uh, or sorry, the stable interest rate. This, I need to update this slides actually. So uh, the variable interest rate is that will, uh, that rate will uh, change depending on the utilization in the protocol. So the more people that want a certain asset, uh, generally it'll be more expensive for you to borrow that asset because there's, there's less of it. Uh, for, what, for assets that aren't being borrowed that much, the interest rate will be a bit lower. And then uh, if you don't want the, the sort of variable asset, uh, the variable interest rate, you can also switch to a stable rate. And what the stable rate is, is essentially you pay a little bit higher interest rate, uh, but then uh, it's, 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 we ensure that it's a bit more, it, it's much more stable uh, and you have less volatility. So that will help with longer term planning uh, in whatever projects or products that you're building. Uh, and then finally, uh, one of the big features that we have is, is, is flash loans. Uh, so it's more developer focused, um, but I mean, you, there, there are some tools out there that people are building to make this less developer focused. And essentially what flash loans are is they allow you to um, borrow a certain amount or whatever, as much capital as you want uh, without any collateral. Uh, so before, if you wanted to borrow uh, money, you need to put up certain collateral, then you'd be able to borrow a certain amount uh, based on the collateral value. With flash loans, you don't need any collateral uh, and you can borrow as much as you want. Uh, but the, 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 um, the, the special thing about it is that you can only borrow it for uh, one, uh, one transaction at a time, which is about 15 seconds. So we, we, the Ave protocol gives you however much uh, loan you request. You can do whatever you want with it, as long as by the end of the transaction, that money is returned back uh, to, to the Ave protocol. So that, that can create some really interesting uh, use cases and projects. Um, and I'll go over some of the projects that have implemented that. Um, yeah. Uh, and, th and this is sort of just going over the code, uh, but we don't have any developers, but essentially uh, if you wanted to build something like this, you'd have, you, you need a developer uh, and you create a smart contract. And then on your smart contract, you'd have a function that essentially uh, asks for a certain amount of money uh, of a certain type. Uh, it receives that, the next smart contract can execute whatever operation it wants to do. So whether it's an arbitrage, whether it's some other innovative mechanism, uh, you can assume within your contract that you have whatever amount of money that uh, you borrowed. Uh, of course, pending, uh, you know, the liquidity and things like that in our lending pool. So, so now, um, actually, before I go over some of the money Legos or what other people have built to give you some ideas of sort of people's creativity, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type it in the Zoom chat. Uh, or I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Um, but it, it, if you have any questions on the protocol so far, I'm not sure if I'm going too fast or too slow. It's a little bit uh, hard with these, these Zoom chats. Uh, yeah, so we, we prefer everybody to stay on mute uh, until the end of the presentation when they can ask the questions. If they have questions uh, in the middle, uh, please guys uh, use the chat and make sure that you send this message to everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, use the chat uh, if you want me to slow down or speed up or focus more on something else. Um, but for now, I'll go over the uh, some use cases that people have already built. So these are in the wild. You can use them right now if you want to. Uh, and this is to give you an idea of what can be built. Some of this stuff was actually built uh, from hackathons and whatever else. Uh, some of these projects like DeFi Saver, it's an actual company uh, that actually makes money and they have a whole team behind them and everything like that. Uh, so anyway, what DeFi Saver does is uh, there, there's a few, uh, let's say, lending protocols uh, like, like Aave, Compound, DYDX, and, and also MakerDAO, where essentially you can, you can borrow a certain amount of money. Uh, DeFi Saver allows you to switch between these different protocols. So whatever interest rate is, let's say, lower or higher, depending on whether you're a borrower or, or lender, uh, they allow you to sort of one-click swap into a different protocol. 
uh, and and in the back end they use uh, Aave's flash loans for that. And the reason why they do that is because let's say you borrowed let's say a hundred dollars on one protocol, uh, and then maybe you've used that hundred dollars somewhere else, so you don't have it lying around where you can just pay it back and close it down and open it up on another protocol. The flash loan allows you to flash borrow or flash loan that amount, pay back your debt, and then open up a new position in another protocol. Uh, so essentially it makes these uh, lending protocols a lot more competitive because anyone at any time can just quickly switch uh, to the, the more, uh, the interest rate that's more favorable for them. Uh, so, so Ivan had a question on the chat. Uh, if someone wants to borrow money, why should he repay a debt? Um, so, so the way the, the protocol works is, um, yeah, it's not, it's not based on honor or, or your word or anything. It's all, it's all protocol level, uh, things like that. So for, for non flash loans, you can only borrow the amount of money that you've uh, collateralized and for, for, for the flash loans, the reason why they get paid back is because if they're not paid back by the end of the, the transaction, the Ethereum transaction, then uh, the, the EVM or the, the Ethereum blockchain just reverts, just goes back to the way it was before. Um, so there's, there's no like honor or promises. It's just strictly code that's run. So it's like, okay, we give you this money and then have we received that money back at the end of the transaction? You know, if we have, then okay, everything's good. If we haven't received it back and then everything just goes backwards in time. Uh, and that's sort of a, a, a special thing about flash loans that, that sometimes it, it can it take a while to, to fully understand. But uh, from a technical perspective, it, it's essentially uh, sort of running, it's, it's all running lines of code. Uh, is there a built-in optimizer? Do you have suggestions to switch between protocols? Uh, so a question, good question from Natalia. Is there a built-in optimizer make, uh, for making suggestions to switch between protocols to earn high interest. Yeah, so, so as I was saying, like, products like DeFi Saver uh, do similar things. Uh, there's a few of them out there that, uh, you know, they, they look at all these different protocols and, and try and help you get the most, like the high interest, if that's favorable for you. Uh, and we definitely encourage those sort of projects to be built um, because different people have different risk profiles. Uh, so, you know, every high interest rate, uh, when interest rates are higher, you, um, some people may want to take them and some people may not want to take them. Uh, and, and we think, you know, if there's more options in the market for people to decide on that, uh, you know, whether it's through like DeFi Saver, just showing you the interest rates, or maybe it can show you other information as well, liquidity, utilization, uh, you know, is a protocol open source? Uh, you know, is it, uh, is it trusted in the industry? Things like that. Because uh, sometimes you don't just want to go for the highest interest rate. Sometimes maybe you want, want something safe as well or safer uh, so so yeah so if you think of building something like that i think that's that's a great idea as well uh, another one this is getting into a more uh, sort of advanced financial instruments um, but uh, swap rate uh, finance also allows you to do um, interest rate swap uh, derivatives uh, so so if you're sort of uh, in in th th these are sort of traditional financial products um, that that are useful and they help uh, they help in certain ways with certain financial instruments Probably not that uh, related to, to this specific hackathon. Um, but yeah, you can, you can do quite interesting things where you know, certain people, they, they want certain interest rates or they, uh, they, some people are willing to take on volatility and others are willing to pay for more stability. Um, so those are certain things you can play with as well. I'm just looking at Ivan's question. Uh, you just can't spend money in which they borrow. Uh, so, so Ivan, um, I'm not sure what the question is, uh, but so for, 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 uh, so for traditional, uh, let's say uh, when you do a, no, a normal borrow on Aave, you need to collateralize that borrow. So you deposit money in and then you can borrow a certain amount based on how much value you've deposited in the protocol. For flash loans, uh, these are special, uh, but these are more for, you need to write a smart contract for that. Uh, and these are special because you don't have to deposit any money in the protocol. Um, so you can spend that money however you want, the, the flash loan money, but it must be paid back before the end of the transaction. 
uh, and, and so that, that's a special thing in Ethereum and the blockchain space. Um, so it's a very blockchain native concept. There's no real analogy, good analogy that applies in the real world. Uh, like banks don't give flash loans. Uh, like you can't have that in the real world. This is only very uh, specific to, to the blockchain space. All right, continuing with uh, some money logo things. Collateral Swap actually is a project uh, I built myself. Um, and, and similar to DeFi Saver, in certain ways, it allows you to swap your positions uh, on these different DeFi protocols. So the thing with Collateral Swap and DeFi Saver and some other projects is it helps bring, uh, I guess, more stability and more uh, competition and more options to the DeFi space. So then people can always uh, get whatever the highest interest rates uh, if they're like a lender or the lowest interest rates if they're a borrower or you know if something in the industry happens and they want to quickly swap into a different protocol uh, that's what these this tooling does so it helps people create safer uh, you know DeFi uh, positions um, especially if you know you're not a real like finance person and maybe you don't really understand uh, a lot of all this stuff in the DeFi space uh, sometimes you need this sort of tooling to help you I guess digest and understand that hey Okay, I can move between these these instruments, uh, or th these these moves will be favourable for for whatever reason. Uh, and then and then something that's uh, I feel I think it's it's this is a great project and pretty a crazy idea as well. Um, Eighty eight miles per hour. So so what they created was a way to um, get upfront fixed rate interest uh, on 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 your loans. Um, uh, so so uh, sorry on your on your borrows. Uh, so, so borrows no loans. So, so what that means is essentially, generally, when you uh, deposit money into a lending protocol like Aave, you have to wait. You know, let's say the the, the APY, the the interest rate is I don't know three percent, right? Uh, so it's like three percent based on an annual uh, interest rate. So that means you have to wait one whole year to get that three percent. Uh, what uh, eighty eight miles per hour do is they allow you to get that interest rate up front. Uh, of course, you know, they, 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 they have their calculations whenever else, so they don't give you the whole 3%, but they calculate, they say, okay, you know, you want to swap a potentially high but volatile interest rate with something upfront, and you're okay with taking a slightly lower interest rate. So that would just give you that interest rate. So that's pretty magical, and, and, and for me, it's like a, a, a crazy idea. Um, but I think tooling like that uh, also gives more options to users so, you know, some people might want to take the fixed interest rate because they need, they need that interest money now because uh, maybe they have bills to pay or something to fix in the house or whatever else. Uh, and, and I think that's really valuable and useful uh, to users that maybe don't want or can't wait for like another year to, to receive that interest. All right, just looking through the questions again uh, from Archio. Is it possible to liquidate Aave loan using Aave Flash Loan? Uh, so at the moment, uh, that's not... So in version one of, of Aave Protocol, when we built Flash Loans, uh, we decided to not allow that. Um, so then, because Flash Loans were very new at that time, and we didn't want people to uh, uh, potentially, like we wanted to essentially uh, minimize the attack surface um, because Flash Loans are so new. Um, and so at the moment, that's not possible. You only can use Aave Flash Loans with other protocols. Uh, Due to the reentrancy uh, protections that we have in the contracts. Okay, uh, Ivan with another question. If you just pay with borrowed money in some shop, for example, transaction will not proceed until they don't give money back. Uh, Ivan, so, so actually, so I, I won't go too, too much into. Um, I think, Ivan, what, what you're trying to understand is uh, sort of the, the flash line concept. It, it, can, it can be a bit difficult to understand. Uh, I'd say that. Uh, it, it's a bit, it's a bit hard to give give an example with with shops and, and things like that because there's there's no real uh, analogy to that. But one analogy that I've given previously was uh, it's like if you go to a bank and you ask the bank for a loan, the bank gives you a loan but says, "Hey, I'll give you this money, but uh, before you leave the bank, uh, you have to pay it back, right?" And if you try and sneak out of the bank and, and run away with the money, uh, basically you're you're brought back in time before you were even entered the bank. Um, so it's like a magical, strange world like that. Uh, and, and, you know, as long as you pay, pay back the money before you leave the bank, and then everything's good. And if you make profits during that time inside the bank, that their profits are for you to keep. 
uh, but if you don't make profits and you can't pay it back for whatever reason, then everything just goes back in time, uh, like you didn't borrow the money. All right, but, but good questions. Uh, keep, keep the questions going, everyone. Uh, and, then, and then some other money logo type projects, uh, just quickly, is, so we've got uh, the Dead Exchange. Uh, so that they're similar to both DeFi Saver and, and collateral swap in that you can swap debt and collateral uh, on, on Compound, uh, which is another lending profile, uh, another lending protocol. Uh, we have Blaza, which is similar to 88 miles per hour. They also do fixed rate lending and borrowing and, and some other things that they're working on, which is pretty cool. A jelly swap, they have cross chain uh, atomic swaps and deposits. So essentially what you can do is uh, you can use, if you have Bitcoin, uh, you can uh, do an atomic swap and, and then deposit uh, and earn sort of all the interest rates and do all the magical money Lego things on Ethereum uh, with, with your Bitcoin. Uh, and then for a combo, I mentioned before that flash loans are targeted towards developers generally because you need to create a smart contract. So for a co combo is, is one of the apps that have created an interface for non-developers to be able to use flash loans. Um, essentially, they, it's like a bunch of Lego pieces and you, you drag these pieces together and you say, hey, like, you know, flash loan this amount and, you know, go to this exchange or do X, Y, Z. Um, so so that, I think that's good for a consumer perspective. You know, if you want to take on arbitrage trades or do certain things like that. Um, but if you're probably if you're building like a, a project or a product or something like that, um, you, you may, you I think you definitely need a developer to help you build that. Um, then, of course, here are some resources as well. Um, I think we'll share this, this slide, uh, these slides with everyone later on. Um, yeah, feel free to join our uh, Discord. Uh, it's quite active, our community. There's a developer channel as well if you're a developer, or also there's you know, an ideas channel and you can just talk about Aave and get ideas in general. Our documentation is pretty good. Uh, then also we have uh, this hack ideas page uh, that I created as well, which has some, some general ideas uh, if you want to have a look at that. Uh, then, of course, uh, Stani, who, who's a uh, CEO founder, he, he's always full of ideas and then posting them on Twitter as well. Uh, and some of them sort of just blow my mind. So, so have a check out that if you're looking for some, some pretty crazy ideas. Uh, then, of course, we have yeah, these, these other links. So, so that's all I had for the presentation. Um, we can open it up for more questions if you want, uh, or if you want to, can we, can we unmute people or uh, what's... Yes, uh, just give me, give, give me a second. Sure. Uh, we will, yeah. If, um... I'm not right. keen to hear what, what everyone's like interested in working on or if you have an idea already, mm -hmm. what you want to work on and things like that. All right, everybody's unmuted. So if you have any background noise, we ask you to mute your microphone if you're not talking. So yeah, pe uh, please feel free to ask your questions to David directly. Do you have any questions and answered questions in the chat? Uh, okay, David. Yep. Uh, as I understood, uh, flash loans uh, might be used uh, only for some speculations. Yes? Uh, not, no, no, not necessarily. So they can be used for speculation in arbitrage, um, but tools like DeFi Saver, Collateral Swap, and Dej. Uh, use them to swap positions, right? Which which isn't speculation. It's more about um, optimizing interest rates. Uh, so optimizing uh, financial positions for people. Mm, okay, but but it uh, it is uh, for trading, of course. Uh, no, no. So uh, let's say if you uh, so if you're optimizing interest rates, that's not necessarily for trading. Uh, it's it's so you can get a better deal. Mm -hmm. It's like you go to a bank and you know your bank its interest rate is really high on your mortgage, but then there's another bank that's giving you a much better interest rate, right? You'd swap to the other bank probably, right? So so that's 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 not really speculation, that's not trading. That's like you're you're just it makes more financial sense for you because you will save money if you go to this better bank, right? So, so that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Good, good questions. Hey, Anyone else? Uh, 
I have a question regarding the implementation in, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, not only, I mean, I'm thinking about the regular person like um, who would actually benefit from, from these loans and, and who don't have the power to have much leverage to negotiate for a better rate. So I'm thinking about the actual implementation of this in countries such as Mexico. How would you apply your loan into the financial system? How do you connect um, to the real life? Mm -hmm. Sure. Once in, or is it only a certain segmentation of the population or what's your vision there? I mean, yes, yeah, so, so I mean, there's a few uh, aspects to that question. So, so the first thing is that, uh, let's say the connection between the real world and let's say the crypto world, there's, there's still like, that's not great at the moment. There, there's wallets like Argent and, and some other wallets that allow you to easily do that in certain countries. Uh, but still, you need to have, uh, let's say, crypto money. Like you need to have ETH or Bitcoin or DAI or some, some crypto assets first before you can take out DeFi loans and things like that. So, so that's an, a problem or an opportunity maybe for you to, to, to work on is how do you more easily get people in Mexico to uh, you know, bring their, their pesos into the, the DeFi system, right? Um, so that's one thing. The, the other thing is uh, some, you know, sometimes uh, banks in the real world, they might have good interest rates, right? But then other times, the DeFi space, the protocols may have much better interest rates, right? So then that's an opportunity as well for consumers uh, to be able to choose and be like, okay, if I have you know, a certain amount of savings, maybe it's better for me now to put some of those savings into DeFi space. So I think that's, that's one way to look at it as well that you can do. Um, and then, and then the, the, other, the other thing about this is to look at uh, that there's opportunities in the DeFi space around you know, borrowing and, and lending money. Uh, that can that can help these users. Uh, so you, you can also build projects around around that to encourage them to to bring their money into the system, so that they can you know gain that interest rate or have more security in their funds. You know, I, I know countries like let's say Argentina, uh, you know the inflation rate you know, you know is often out of the roof, uh, and so sometimes it might be easier for them to go into a stable coin like Dai or USDC uh, or something like that. So yeah, so those are, there are a few things. Then you can get into the uh, really advanced uh, concepts uh, that some people have also worked on, not necessarily in like Latin America, but uh, where people have worked on concepts where they pool money of depositors. So let's say I only have $100, uh, so the interest on $100 isn't that much. Um, but then other people, uh, if we get 100 people putting $100 each, then that pool of money is quite a lot. And the interest you earn on that you know, is a lot higher than if it was just myself. So uh, products or companies like Pull Together or these other uh, companies, they've created these products. Pull Together is like a, they call it a lossless lottery. So what they do is people buy these lottery tickets, right? Uh, and, and it goes into this pool, lending pool. And then each certain amount of time, every week, every month, uh, the interest that's earned on that pool of money is given to one random person, right? For everyone else, they get their money back, right? So no one loses any money. It's just that you're, you're using the power of these pooled funds uh, to earn this interest and then that interest goes to, to someone, right? So they did it, like if that's a lottery random way, uh, maybe there's like, I'm sure there's other ways you can do it where it's maybe people taking turns or it's, it's something else where you can take advantage of these pooled funds in, in the DeFi space. Uh, so that, yeah, that's, that's something I would, uh, yeah get you to, to, to look into. Does that, does that help with, with sort of your thinking and then your question? So what I, was, what I was thinking is that in a country like Mexico today, mm -hmm. this ecosystem, alternative ecosystem, will be really attractive to someone because right now, let's say the political and economical conditions are not uh, properly optimum here in Mexico. So there's a lot of money in US dollars or other currencies that will be looking for um, 
to pull that out of the country. I'm thinking in my personal assets, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So to some degree, I mean, we use common or legalized kind of solutions such as BITSO, which is fairly common and, and well established here in Mexico. But I'm not sure, this is just for trading, but you're talking about the financial system where how do you check and balance your own reputation are you lending what you're lending so you're talking about this alternative market of of lending borrowing and and uh, and i think that's very interesting particularly um i mean it's just interesting it's complex it's a it's a it's um in terms of like the real citizens who do you borrow for how do you make the market and so i'm thinking about um grounding applications because I'm thinking in Mexico, it would be quite appealing to think about this alternative application so that people can actually find that um, easy alternative to manage assets or at least uh, alleviate the uncertainty we currently have. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not really uh, well versed in, in the, the ecosystem in, in Mexico or Latin America at the moment. Um, but generally for, for other countries, uh, they, they might use platforms like BITSO to get the fiat money, the, the, you know, the, the, the government money into crypto money, like transfer into Bitcoin and ETH. And sometimes they might use those platforms, but not use it as trading. Once they have it as Bitcoin or ETH, then they can withdraw it into their own crypto wallet. Right? And then if, once they have it in their own crypto wallet, then they can take advantage of all these alternate crypto systems like Aave. Um, and then just, just on the, the comment on uh, sort of Aave and how, how we work out sort of our, our alternative system, the, the, the markets and things like that. So, so I mean, Aave, we, we've, we've, we released in uh, January, actually. Um, but but the, the reason why people trust our, our platform and protocol is, is it, firstly, it's all open source. The code's all there. You can verify it. You can look at it. You know, anyone can, can see, you know, exactly what's happening with their money. Um, and, and we've built quite a lot of trust in the community. Currently, we have $70 million. Uh, you can see here uh, deposited in the protocol across all these assets. Uh, so you can see all these different types of assets. So the thing is, um, in the crypto space, everything moves quite quickly. Uh, and for people to get access to, to protocols like Aave, uh, they need to first, I guess, yeah, convert their, their fiat into the crypto system. Uh, so, so that's like in Latin America, that's probably maybe an opportunity, um, you know, whether it's helping people go from I mean, something like BITSO to a MetaMask wallet or some other Ethereum wallet. How do they secure that? How do they make sure, you know, it's not stolen and things like that. Um, but I think once they have that, then they can enter all these alternate markets um, and all these, you know, this alternate uh, financial system quite easily. I would be happy to collaborate in terms of creating the culture or the communication mechanism, because I don't think the big capitals or even normal people here in Mexico are very versed. So we will need to, I mean, I will be happy to collaborate in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities in like all over the world, uh, besides Latin America in like just education, uh, you know, of, of like, you know, how, how do people use crypto or how do they keep it safe why would they want to use crypto right and and things like this where you can earn a better interest rate than your bank you know, instead of inflation government money inflation you can put it in something like DAI or usd coin you know there's all these different flavors of sort of usd coin right um so you can choose you have a whole selection of, of diversifying some different usd pegged assets that's that's a cool um really really good question um uh, and comment um, so yeah, yeah. Hit me up. Let me know um, what you're working on. Uh, look forward to seeing. We have a one question in the chat. Can you speak about the security features of the protocol? Or, or anything you want to say about your project or uh, things? This like is that? a question coming from Monique. Monique, if you would like to unmute your microphone, if you have a decent connection, yeah. maybe you can ask this question. Hi. Uh, Thanks. Uh, I was just wondering about the security features. I've gone through the white paper, but I hadn't had a chance to really read the full thing, so I kind of glanced through. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am a little bit new to DeFi, but I'm in the process of building a, a game that's going to be teaching people stuff like this. So it might actually address some of what Natalia is talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very interested in securing, being able to discuss with people what the security is. So when they say, oh, I don't want to get robbed from the blockchain, mm -hmm. um, when we're especially speaking with people who don't know um, things about crypto. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, so, so you, I guess there's, there's two, there's a few sides uh, of the coin for, for this, for the, these sorts of questions. So on one side, if you're talking to very, um, like, let's say non-technical, non-blockchain people, uh, and then something that's then, then you got to go over the real basics of like wallets and private keys, or maybe not even private keys, but you know, what, what certain wallets to use and not to use and how to secure your funds. And the difference between that and a traditional bank, um, and that's that's a lot of education. That's probably a lot of hand holding and things like that as well. For people that are maybe a bit more um, comfortable with alternative assets, and maybe they bought some Bitcoin or something like that, uh, they can, and they're looking into more like technical security. Uh, then also that there's there's a whole other world around you know securing your computer, securing your keys, securing your wallet, uh, you being able to use certain wallets which ones are trustworthy and things like that. Uh, and then, and then on the, in the even more technical side on Aave specifically, uh, we have like security audits uh, and things like that, that you can look at. Um, so, you know, if you really want to dive uh, really deep into the protocol and, you know, why it's safe or who's looked at it and things like that. Um, yeah. We have our, our, our security audits um, on GitHub and on our website as well that you can look into. Uh, and we have security bounties and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, so so that's that's a, a very wide um, it's a very wide problem, right? So I'd say there's like uh, maybe for this hackathon or when when you guys are ideating on on what to work on, you know, think about like where what 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 chunk of that problem would you want to start with? Um, and also, I think it depends on on your market as well, right? So some of it might be really really basic, like you know, how do people get an Ethereum wallet on their phone and how do they secure that? Uh, or on their computer. Uh, then on the other side, it's like, okay, why, why should I, you know, use Aave or why should I use this other platform? You know, how can I check that these platforms are secure or trustworthy? Um, so yeah, so that's, it's a, yes, yeah, so it's a, it's a very wide, uh, it's a wide opportunity space, I'd say. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Any other questions or? comments that people have yeah hello david my name is juliana just quick question you know yep. uh, you are doing a cool job because you provide liquidity flexibly uh, provide liquidity to reduce volatility like uh, uh dynamic uh um, optimizer really between protocols um and crypto mm -hmm. i'd like to ask because I see the huge, um, I'm from financial markets here, I can see huge uh, ability to construct uh, things like uh, re-rate, interest rate, uh, you said uh, incomes um, matching and uh, all other derivatives will be, um, are not limited mm -hmm. to develop on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, but however, probably you see some limitation um, to wider your field of um, market, but it's not market, it's like mix of bank and exchange. Uh, we can describe you. <laughs> so uh, that's always uh, have some limitation uh, because of uh, system not developed as much. Uh, do you see and how you um, able to solve that if you if you have thinking about it yeah uh, so, so do you mean from um i think from, from what i understand uh, of the question correct, correct me if i'm wrong um but, but you're talking about you know there's, there's a lot of opportunities in the um i guess DeFi space and things like that but the, there's still the it's problem of on onboarding with people yeah mm -hmm. yeah so like i mean yeah so the onboarding i think that's that's a huge opportunity space Dep depends it really depends a lot on your market um, I think, and like, like I said before, you know, there, there's always the big friction issue of, 
you know, how do you get your government money, like your paycheck that's paid in fiat? Yeah, that's how do you a, get that into the system? Uh, yeah, global pr uh, problem. So, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. but maybe uh, there are some. Um, um intermediate decision to uh to help uh scale in this um, um transaction connection opportunity uh wider um so yeah i know a difficult question that's uh <laughs> not, not easy yeah. to answer but yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a good question and it, it definitely is difficult and i think a lot of companies are, are working on this problem uh you know you can do the the full like legal regulated uh, route, like you know Facebook Libra was trying to do, you know places like Coinbase, you know they're, they're like going that way. You know that's very expensive, very long, very slow, but it's probably one of the best ways uh, to go about it. Um, but you know if you're a small scale project uh, and you're testing, you know it might not be viable to go down that route. Um, so I mean there, there's there's other routes you could go. Um, not that I, I reckon I don't recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there was uh, something like, you know, back in the day, local Bitcoins. Um, and that was essentially like peer to peer. So someone would have Bitcoin and someone would have cash. Then you'd meet on the street and then you'd swap your mm -hmm. Bitcoins for cash. Um, you know, there's a lot of issues with that, both like regulatory, legal issues, you know, AML, KYC, also just general security issues. I know people, some people got robbed and things like that uh, using those services. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's sort of the, the, the gap the huge gap between it and, and there's many different in between steps as well that you can take. So depending on your community, right? I can imagine, let's say if my, um, let's say my brothers or my family members, they want to get some Ethereum or Bitcoin, you know, but they don't, they're not very technical, right? So one way is if they trust me and I trust them, then we could do an exchange, right? Then it, then it wouldn't go to necessarily through, you know, these, these other regulatory uh, or these, these other companies. So, so, so that, I think that's one alternative way, and I think that's happening out in the world as well. You know, if because it's but that's based on trust, right? So if you, you know, have a high, it's a very high trust. Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, everybody questions how to input encode trust yeah. uh, systematically. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Yeah, that's right. I know, I know there was, there was some projects a long time ago around people trying to. Uh, create that sort of trust network as well where you know everyone might start from like zero trust and then as you you know as people as, as your reputation increases then you get more of a trust score um, so those are also opportunities that you could probably investigate as well thank so, you that's right Cool. How, how are we doing for our time? Um, uh, so we have, uh, we usually have uh, like 15 minutes uh, left uh, for the presentations because people also use these workshops to pitch their ideas. So if you guys have anything to pitch, uh, please uh, let me know. Uh, for those of you who are here, also please put your Discord ID in the chat so we could account for the voting power to uh, reward you for attending this workshop and a reminder as well that um, Avi is our sponsor put forward a $2,000 award for those who develop their projects on decentralized finance using Avi and that's what David was talking about today so if you have any still any questions for David uh, you can still ask them um, if you're ready to present please you know raise your hand or just unmute your microphone and start presenting your idea Okay, last stupid questions, David. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no stupid uh, questions. There is uh, no stupid specific questions, I agree. Okay. <laughs> um, about uh, a case with uh, over over collateralized uh, loan, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems uh, uh, why I, sh I should uh, borrow some money if I uh, have already have money? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, that's a good question. Um, so, so generally in the traditional financial world, or let's call it the, um, let's say middle class uh, and up uh, world, generally you, the, the way people create wealth is, is by leveraging assets that they have, right? So that, that would be one reason why you would borrow money using money as collateral. So let's say you have $100 
uh, and you deposit that hundred dollars into a bank. Now the bank will let you borrow fifty dollars, right? So then now you can use that fifty dollars for something else, and maybe it helps you, you know, invest in your business and whatever else, and, and grow your business. Uh, and then therefore now you've like created more value in the world, right? But you still have that hundred dollars deposited that's used as collateral, right? So then later on you get a hundred dollars back. So you know, net, you 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 only had a hundred dollars, but then you could essentially have you know, access to more resources. Um, and, and generally that, that would be one of the reasons why you would want to deposit. Another reason would be that uh, you don't have to borrow money when you deposit uh, in a DeFi space. So you can deposit just because you want to earn interest as well. Cause you know, maybe you have a hundred dollars there and it's not doing anything. Uh, you know, the federal reserves is printing more money. So your hundred dollars is actually reducing in value. Uh, so then you maybe you want to earn interest on a hundred dollars uh, by depositing it in, in a protocol like Aave uh, so then it can grow over time. Does that answer the question, Ivan? Basically. Cool. And uh, Dave, one more question. You mentioned that mm -hmm. 70 million, uh, that's a, um, let's say bank of, um, uh, of users. Uh, however, could you um, tell if it's open information what is turnover to understand your liquidity uh, scale? Uh, you mean like the, you mean the utilization? Is that what you mean by turnover? Yeah, yeah by day or monthly. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so you can, I mean, all, so, uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's a blockchain, everything's open source, or, also our data is all open as well. So as a, as a technical person, or if you have a developer, they can always extract that data. Um, on our website directly, uh, hopefully you can see it on the screen here, uh, you can see a yeah, current market size of 70 million, and then here you can see the liquidity borrowed and things like that. Um, so yeah. here, if you, if you take the, the borrowed amount, take away liquidity, yeah, then you can see that, that that's how much is uh, not being utilized or how much is being utilized. And then, uh, you know, depending if you set up your own software, you know, you could probably get, get the, that data of, you know, how much is being used yeah. per month and velocity of the money and, and whatever else. So that's definitely something you could do. Thank you. That's right. All right. Any more questions? Uh, do you have anyone ready to present their ideas? Because I, I know that I received some messages on Discord uh, asking me for the time to present. So that would be your time. If you're here, please do so. Who wants to present? Hi, can I, can I quickly present? Yeah, go yes, yes, please. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Natalia. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much so for this excellent presentation. Yes, and we will see David again. So we're going to schedule uh, another workshop with him if you guys have more questions. Uh, it will be about in about a week from now. Uh, when we get closer to the hackathon end. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions and you are working towards this award, uh, so we will have another chance with David. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, cool. Dave. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Go ahead, Natalia. Thank you. So very, very quickly, um, I am locally living in Mexico and an initiative that is called Poderosa Emprendedora is an initiative targeting women's businesses. And basically we're a small community of 100 businesses and we're in 13, 14 cities in Mexico. So uh, the, the trouble that we have here is that all together we have the potential to actually create our own, our own marketplace. But at the same time, we don't want to only be a marketplace, but we want to support the, the I, I would say the, the women who make money through social selling. So unfortunately, we are not quite yet ready in Mexico to jump from B, uh, B to C and there are a lot of successful businesses 
that rely on social selling, such as doTERRA, such as um, Avon, uh, Mary Kay, or other firms. And the thing is that uh, this provides is particularly an income opportunity for women who are vulnerable and cannot create their own product, but they rely on, transac on, on these transactions to generate an additional source of income. So, um, in Poderosa Emprendedora, we also have an academy because we believe in the reskilling and the upskilling of these women. But we do know that for some reason, there's a good uh, timing, especially when they have uh, children and they don't have much possibility for, for for other actions or a support network, they rely on social selling. Now we've joined with Vendito this initiative to actually create a platform that would be easy for, for these businesses and more businesses to actually join their products to uh, for a somehow uh, pre-validations because we need to validate uh, sometimes the quality, sometimes the the origin like we need to validate there's a trust mexico is one of the countries that um where trust is something that is not easily given or granted it's something that you actually have to work we're not a trusting com uh, country so what we want uh is to have support to create a technological tool for us to validate uh, create the income of the marketplace of the potential products, but to validate the transactions that occur between the social sellers and the, the transactions between the producers. So um, I would say in Bendito, we have been talking about um, the, the different processes that will help us create an efficient market and to track down, but we are in the hunt for, for minds and talented people who can help us create the application and the experience for our audience to actually be able to operate. And we don't know, um, since we're dealing with different types of, um, I would say literacy in terms of businesses. We think it's highly important to develop something that's intuitive, has some gamification, and, and so that we can track the transactions. So here, these are producers, either of services or products. And then we need to connect with the actual uh, social sellers and to create a platform that will help us generate this ecosystem. So today, as of um, in the Bendito platform, we are looking for, again, these mines. We do have um, a source of real business that, are, that, are, had, that had been very challenged because of the COVID, and they're there, and they're actually looking to connect. Now, right now, uh, we are working through Facebook, and we do want an alternative. Facebook has imposed some regulation and some, um, let's say, especially with some of the products that are here in our, in our base, such as antibacterial or some other products. So, I, so what we actually want to do is um, support the real ecosystem. So I think it's, it's a fairly simple uh, project. We have a community already built. And uh, for us, we, we come here, we, we have a, a way to organize ourselves. And I think our challenge is to have the, the brain power and the talent in the digital world to actually make our operation um, more effective and scalable. I think we've been... Um, our technical skills are fairly limited, but, but we, we are in the hunt for that talent that will help us create this user experience for people to upload their product, for a, a, um, for a certain validation to occur, 
to recruit the social sellers and something that will create a little bit of like trust and uh, transparency in the transactions that happen here so that we could pay them the, both the producer we can pay the the social seller and we can generate performance indicators and actually support with uh, not only with the social selling but an economy of services because we know that people can can create transactions creating uh, videos of so uh, photographies for professional product uh, presentation. So that's those are the things that uh, we look forward to see if we can solve and uh, trying to create um, to level the playing field for someone who is selling at home with very little skills. No, I would say no marketing skills to create their own logo. So we, we actually want to create this um, ecosystem so that it will be easier for, for everyone in the community to have a fair chance. So up, to, up until now, this is uh, what it's about uh, Poderosa Emprendedora, our, our challenge for this hackathon. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Natalia. Uh, yes, if any of the developers hear that, can you please uh, find Natalia on our Discord? Her channel uh, is Vendito, and you can find it on the Teams, Team Channel Vendito. Uh, so she's looking for developers to help her develop this uh, platform. Uh, if you have uh, any any other presentations, guys, please unmute your microphone, start presenting. Uh, just a reminder, we would like to limit all presentations for two minutes, so please be mindful of the time of others. Um, you can do so now. Or you can also post something in the chat. And don't forget to post in the chat your IDs uh, from Discord so we can add the power to you. Um, also a reminder, tomorrow we have a very important presentation at the same time as today. Uh, it's going to be an opening ceremony uh, where we have state all the rules and how to submit your hack um, and all we announce all the prizes that we will have for this hackathon. Uh, we also bring uh, Angela Chan, so she is the CEO of Hackathons International with a great, great presentation on actually how to build and manage your hackathon team effectively in order so probably Natalia maybe it's going to be also very useful for you to understand who has to be in this team to succeed uh, like and everybody else not not only Natalia but because Natalia is looking for the members right now um, yes so please attend tomorrow this the messaging will be in discord you also should have uh, received invitation uh, from our Google account. If you haven't received an invitation, please check your spam folder because yes, yeah, so we have this common problem uh, that mm, invitation might go to the spam folder, please check. And uh, it also, this uh, opening ceremony will be repeated for Asia Pacific at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, tomorrow as well, but not unfortunately just in a very limited uh, format without the excellent presentation about hiking teams. Um, we also have uh, uh, presentations for our whole weekend planned and you should have received email about all these presentations, so please attend them uh, and stay connected. All right, so uh, do we have anyone to present still? We're at the limit time of our meeting. Let me know if you can uh, if you would like to present. All right, I don't see anyone wanting to present. So thank you so much. I, I thank you guys for your time. And thank you, David, for the excellent presentation. We're going to bring him again in a week time. Uh, happy hacking, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.